Hello and welcome. I'm Nick Moskis. I'm the Chief of Planning for the Summit Metro Parks. We're really excited to begin the next phase of the Freedom Trail, Phase 4, which is in the downtown Akron area. We look forward to hearing your input and we're excited to share with you what we've got in the works. And I'm going to walk you through the trail and then ask for some input from you. This graphic shows the Freedom Trail. It starts in the upper right hand corner at the county line where it meets the Portage, which is Portage County's county wide bike and hike trail. The um, portion shown in green is uh, phase one and it goes through Talmadge. Phase two is shown in red and phase three is shown in blue. The next graphic will zoom into the area circled in red here. Zoomed in, you can more clearly see Freedom Phase 3 shown in light blue and Phase 4 shown in the dark blue. Phase 4 is actually terminating at the towpath, which is the zigzaggy orange line that you see. Freedom Trail Phase 3 is circled here in red. Let's discuss that a little further. This is a more detailed view showing the trail as it enters Akron. The section between East Market Street and Mill Street has not been constructed due to a property ownership dispute with CSX Rail. We're still working to resolve that issue. Back to our downtown view, we're gonna focus on the Freedom Force section of trail, which is again highlighted here in red. As you may know, in 2015, there was this feasibility study that was done to show if the trail could even be constructed through the downtown area. Part of the study was to try to get people from the existing Freedom Trail, which is this corridor here, to the towpath, which is in this area. So you see down in the corner of the sheet is a slope code. So anything less than 5% is white. Anything between five and 8.33% is shown in this peachy orange color. And anything over 8.33% is burgundy. And the reason that five to 8.33% slope is important is because it shows that it's ADA compliant. So as you can imagine, buildings that are flat are shown in white, but right down here in the heart of the downtown area. So here's EJ Thomas trying to go through these buildings to get down to the towpath. You can see how it's, everything is red. All the options to get down here are red. Now here's Mill Street and it is orange. So it falls in that five to 8.33% slope, but that corridor has buildings built right to the edge of the road so it's impossible to get a trail through there so we can continue down this corridor and then look for options that would allow us to get further down down to the south and therefore to the towpath as a result of that study was this graphic this shows again this railroad corridor the freedom trail phase three is here in blue going to the Mill Street Trailhead. And in this area, the Freedom Trail is on the east side of the active CSX Railroad tracks. Those tracks continue down this way. And then over here is the towpath. And it is, of course, on the west side of the track. So how do we get trail riders from the east side of the active railroad tracks to the west side? So one option is look, let's get up to grade here at Perkins Street and follow this corridor. And the grade was fine there, but again, it was one of those situations where the corridor, which has four lanes of traffic in it, was too narrow to accommodate a new trail. Continuing further down, you were at the Mill Street trailhead here. We could either uh, ride up over the Mill Street bridge uh, on the bridge and then turn to the south uh, past this, the uh, Quicker Square area, uh, follow the west side of the tracks, and then continue down. Or another option would have been stay on the east side behind E.J. Thomas and continue down this way using one of the bridges. Uh, in this case, we're showing it at exchange and then crossing over and continuing further down. 
as we got further down to this area, as you may recall, Main Street had a major reconfiguration which affected this is Barges um, Street. And uh, part of that reconfiguration, when we looked at it, we, we realized that there was a non-ADA compliant slope in this area. So it really led us to this Rosa Parks option, and we'll go into more depth in that uh, in future slides. So what this plan does, it takes the diagram from the previous sheet and turns it into more of a realistic alignment to follow. So let's focus on the area shown here in yellow. This photo is taken from the towpath towards the spaghetti warehouse. And in front of you, you see the first section of the Freedom Trail, which has been constructed already. This portion of the Freedom Trail was constructed by the city of Akron to work as a detour while the towpath was closed during construction of their large overflow combined sewer separation project. Returning to our view, looking northeast towards the university. Let's proceed down the trail one more block and you'll see uh, what we've already constructed there. The next block shows where we've already constructed a widened portion of sidewalk, which will function as the Freedom Trail. On the next block, you'll see that the trail continues. To the left, you'll also see a new parking lot. This parking lot will be used during the day by local businesses, but on the weekends and evenings, it can be used by trail users to park and enjoy the trail. This is a view looking towards downtown Akron. You can see the Polymer Science Building in the background. So this is Broadway and Rosa Parks. And what we're proposing is a beautiful bridge that will allow bikers to cross the road. And it'll actually function as a gateway into the downtown area and really highlighting multimodal transportation with the Metro RTA facility off to the right in the bike path and the roadway is really be a beautiful way to en enter the city. Here's another view of that proposed bridge. Again, these are uh, computer generated renderings and just ideas of what could happen in this area. This view is looking west back towards the proposed bridge. And this is just north of the Metro RTA facility. Now the trail will continue to the north and in this area of yellow. The trail will follow an existing asphalt path that is adjacent to the CSX railroad tracks. As you proceed further up this asphalt path, you'll be will be behind the depot apartment building, and then you see Exchange Street there in, in the distance. The trail then passed underneath Exchange Street. Now this is another view looking the other direction towards the actually southeast. So you see downtown Akron in the foreground, University of Akron in the background, and the railroad corridor going down the center of the sheet. So let's focus on this area in yellow. So this is after passing underneath Exchange Street, and you really get a, a great glimpse of the downtown area from a vantage point that you don't see very often. There are some really great points of interest here. Uh, the Old Stone School, St. Bernard's Church, and in the distance, Quaker Square. So then again, continuing on that rail corridor, and this is, a, a, again, a, a view that most people in the area don't get to see. It's how the railroad valley kind of passes through downtown. Here's a photo of the area from 1968 or 1969. You can see in the distance on the right hand side, the blonde brick building with the uh, brick that goes across, which is part of the university now. The blonde brick building, which is part of the university campus is actually the, it's uh, referred to as the Buckingham building, but it's historically the Union Depot and it was opened in 1950. 
So now rising out of that railroad corridor, we, we're again getting over the railroad tracks. So we're going to focus on this University Avenue crossing. So this image is just a, a rough depiction of how we're envisioning we'll be able to get from one side of those heavily used CSX railroad tracks to the other. So this corridor is really a beautiful area. This is looking east towards the university, again, the Polymer Science Building. And this is, by the way, a main thoroughfare for students going from the east side of the tracks to the west side of the tracks. The Polsky Building, of course, is on the west side and the main campus is on the east side. And then this is looking towards downtown. It's really a, a striking view both ways. Kent State University recently built this gateway between the university and downtown Kent. This was actually a federally funded bike trail. And it was really taking something that, that people don't view as a, as a bike corridor, but really a pedestrian corridor tied with a bike corridor. And we're hoping to get the same outcome with the Uni University Avenue Bridge. Continuing to the north is the next section. The trail again will drop back down into the railroad corridor and be in the vegetated area to the east side of the railroad tracks. This area is home to some native vegetation. Though heavily disturbed, we're looking to build a uh, corridor that has a natural feel to it uh, that's kind of bringing nature into the city. And then rising back up to the university area and eventually meeting the Mill Street Trailhead. So you can see in the distance there is a mural. This beautiful mural was painted by the Art Bomb Brigade. And that is headed up by uh, a, one of the professors from the University of Akron and using high school and college students to uh, do this beautiful work. What you'll see in the foreground of the mural is a lawn area. In that area will be constructed a parking lot and a restroom facility. And the trailhead that we're looking to build here would be of our standard Summit Metro Parks vocabulary, uh, a building with a kind of natural um, flair to it and using natural materials, uh, barnstone and vegetation. And then the trail will pass underneath the bridge and continue to the north. That is the beginning or the, actually the end of Freedom Trail Phase 3. Okay, I know that was a lot of information. I hope you're as excited as we are. And remember, this is just showing where the trail can be. We, the, the important work starts now. We're moving into the construction drawings that will be bid for construction of the trail. So the, the one thing to remember when, when we start with what, what can you do is to know that we, are at this point because of feedback that we got from you from the public. Uh, so we keep on hearing, we consistently hear whenever we ask the public, what would you like in our parks? Is we would like more trails. We want them to be safe, clean, and with restrooms. And you can see that's what we're doing with this trail. So now that you're familiar with where we are to date, the question is what can you do? And the, the number one thing is we need your feedback. So please consider providing your feedback. Uh, what features would you like to, to see on the trail? What would encourage you to visit? What would make it unique to Akron? What would celebrate the Akron Summit County community? So click on the link in the video description below to provide your feedback. So what is next? We will post a second video at a later date that shows what we heard, summarizing what we heard, and then show how it might be implemented into the trail. So we're really excited to hear your feedback and also display how we can use your thoughts to make the trail better.
So the timeline is we're designing the trail. We're looking to have construction drawings done by the end of um, 2021. And we'll take those plans and then share them with funding agencies to try to seek grants to help us construct the trail. Once we've secured all the funding, then we can begin constructing the trail. Again, thank you so much uh, for taking the time to hear uh, and see what we've got in the works. We really appreciate uh, everything that you do, and we're here to serve, and, and we hope that you're as excited as we are.